Hello, welcome to Workable Miniatures. I'm Jim, and tonight we're going to be painting a 3D printed war golem. It came from one of these sites, I can't remember which. We'll primarily be using Army Painter Speed Paints, War Paints. Let's get started. This miniature was previously printed, washed, cured, assembled, and then primed with an airbrush using Vallejo's black primer, followed by zenithal sprays of gray and white. Once the primer is dry to the touch, I begin adding sprays of metallic paint, starting with an anti-zenithal spray of Vallejo's dark aluminum. I next sprayed Vallejo's aluminum from a general overhead zenithal angle. This second metallic was applied over most of the miniature. The third airbrush metallic is Vallejo Silver, and this is applied from only directly overhead to pick up the highest areas. Mixing Mr. Weathering Solvent Multi Black until it easily fills the wrinkles of my geezer like papaw flanges, I apply this carefully to all of the recesses, just touching the tip of the brush and letting it flow to where it needs to go. I figured at this point I would try speed paints through an airbrush for the first time and so I head back outside. I didn't really plan this out and I just grabbed two oranges and two light tannish colors. The dark orange being applied from only an anti-zenithal position on the right side of the miniature. The lighter orange is sprayed from a zenithal position, again only on the right side. I applied the lighter tan color from a zenithal position, this time only on the left side of the miniature. And I also apologize for doing such a poor job on staying in frame. Finally, the darker tan is sprayed from an anti-zenithal position and only on the miniature's left side. The only real important thing to remember is to spray the speed paint lightly enough as to not completely obscure the metallics beneath, assuming that's even possible with speed paint, at least without an unreasonable amount of coats. The combinations of these colors layered over metallics using an airbrush it makes for a great looking transition between shades with very little effort. All of the paint application took less than 15 minutes of work if you exclude the drying time for the pen wash. I then begin the long highlight process using additional metallics. Originally I was going to try to paint on some crazy rune designs on the larger plates and have a white, silver, and gold motif which I think would look awesome. But for story purposes, I like the idea of this massive bronze statue standing above a decrepit dais, where the party, after months of journey and dangerous ventures, finally reach their objective, it lying only a stone's throw away. Then they hear his cackle. The bandit Bastion and his cohorts have done it again, somehow having beat them to the relic. He jams something into the gears of the portcullis, preventing them from claiming their prize. They can only look on, dejected and helpless as he reaches for what should have been theirs. Their teeth clench, near to shattering from his endlessly irritating joviality, at least until he's hoisted off the ground by the massive golem's hand, completely enveloping his head. Its gargantuan blade sings through the air, followed by the tearing and crack of bone, following by a disgusting impact of Bastion's upper torso slamming against the stone floor, his eyes locking with theirs. There's no fear, only confusion. I use a different metallic paint to edge highlight the other side to more complement the other color. Ultimately I decided to go with a solid bronze look for the entire golem, with the idea being that I thought it would be great to have this thing stalking them in a large open field during daylight hours, with the glint of the sun reflecting off of its plates, dazzling their eyes and making the battle all the more difficult. This is the final result. I really enjoyed spraying the metallics and the speed paints through the airbrush. This was the first time I did either of them, and it came out pretty good. I, I'm happy with the results. I may come back and add some coloration, maybe some glowing eyes, and maybe some blood spattering on the sword and the armor.
That's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something or inspired to start or expand your own collection. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Working Want Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Until the next video.